we're standing here on a beautiful turf grass area. It's very green, very beautiful right now. This is a simulated tea box here at the Turf Grass Research Center. And this is irrigated a little bit different. Actually, it's got two systems on it. It's got a traditional above ground sprinkler irrigation system, but it also has a below ground subsurface drip irrigation system. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And Dr. Lou Anella is here to tell us about the components, the advantages and disadvantages of a system. So what do we, we can't see anything here. What do we got? Well, we have polyethylene tubes in the ground, probably about six inches below the turf. And every 12 or 18 inches, they have an emitter in there that allows the water to drip out. And that emitter is an amazing piece of engineering. It has a check valve in there so that it doesn't, the water doesn't run out at the low end. They're supposed to be self-cleaning. They're supposed to be pressure compensating so the same amount of water comes out over the whole area. They're really quite amazing. And so every 12 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches, you can buy them of different lengths. There's a small hole in the polyethylene and it lets the water come out at a very nice slow rate. So you mentioned different spacing, 12 or maybe 18 inches. What, uh, for the soil, what does it matter if it's 12 or 18 inches? How does that affect it? Well, the soil actually determines what spacing you'd use. So if you think about a sandy soil, that water is going to move fairly uh, quickly and fairly straight down. So you would need a pipe with the spacings shorter. But in a clay soil, that water is actually going to spread out, and so you can get away with having the emitters two feet away. Actually, it would be better to have them two feet away so that you don't put too much water down too quickly. So in a system like this, the water is being dripped underground instead of sprayed above the ground. What are some, uh, just for water conservation or water efficiency, what are some advantages there? Well, the advantage is you're putting the water exactly where you want it. You know, you don't necessarily want water up on the trees, up on the leaves, that can cause disease. So you're putting the water exactly where you want it. And almost every spray irrigation system you've ever seen has the pressure too high. And so when you get that misting, that's a waste of water. That water can evaporate and just disappear. So here, all the water is going exactly to the roots, right to the roots. Very little waste. Now you can overwater even with a drip system. So you can get runoff, you can overwater, but typically it is much more efficient. And then what about the the drip rate or the, you know, what does the emitter emit? Is it a lot of water, a little water? How does that work? Again, there's a range. You can buy different products, but usually it's 0.4 gallons per hour, not minute, but per hour, right. or 0.6 or 0.9. So gallons per hour. So it's a very, very slow rate. And then if you were to compare that to, there's two systems here, so there's the above ground system. How much water would that be putting out, would you say? So the spray irrigation system will be putting out one to two gallons per minute, not per hour. Wow. So, so a big difference in the amount of water that's going out, and you're putting it at the roots versus above the ground. Now, what about disadvantages? Why isn't everybody doing this? You know, in, in Oklahoma, there's not a lot of these systems. Why not? Well, it really isn't efficient if you're going to do a really large area. So for a small area like this, a tee box, it really works quite well. But if you're going to try to do a soccer field, you know, that's going to be a lot of pipe under the ground and that's going to cost a lot of money. So you've got to trench that in or, you know, get it down under the surface. So that's going to be very labor intensive. In this situation here, we're actually using non-potable water. So the water is not very clean. And those little holes that are in the polyethylene pipe can clog very easily. So we always have a filter, always, always have a filter on a drip system. Well, here, that filter is getting clogged within five minutes of us turning the water on. So in this situation, it's actually not working very well at all because we don't have a nice, clean water source. So the filter's getting clogged and you'd have to be cleaning it all the time. So even at home though, like once a year, you've got to clean that filter because it will get deposits on it and it will affect the efficiency. Another reason that makes drip a little bit more difficult to use is people aren't familiar with it. And also, it's all under the ground. Is it working? You know, I don't know. Is it working? 
<laughs> so, you know, you've got to, you, there are some things you can do to know whether or not it's working. There's actually these little flags you can buy that will pop up when your system is working. And you can also measure the pressure on the line. So when you put this system in, you measure the pressure, and then as the system, you know, ages, you keep measuring that pressure. And if the pressure goes down, then you know you might have a leak somewhere. If pressure goes up, you've probably got clogging somewhere. So there are things you can do to know whether or not the system is working, but it is a challenge. So um, another thing that's often talked about is, you know, people will ask, well, what about if I need to apply a fertilizer or a pesticide and, and the label says, well, I need to wash that in, or for a fertilizer, I need to water that in lightly. What, what do I do there with a, tri a subsurface drip system? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, honestly, yeah. whether or not if you watered it heavily enough, whether or not it would bring the fertilizers down, not by washing it in, but sort of uh, uh, dissolving it and letting it flow down with the, with the water profile. I really don't know. I don't know if research has been done on that or not. Um, but for fertilizer like nitrogen, I'm sure that would happen. Yeah. But whether or not uh, pre-emergent, for example, is going to get dissolved well enough and brought down into the profile, that I'm really not sure. So um, with, a, with a system like this, there seems to be a lot of advantages, a few disadvantages as well. What do you think is the key driver for something like this? What, what, what would be the top important reason why I'd want to do something or try this out? Well, I'm glad you asked that because in many communities, especially in California and maybe in Texas as well, it's cold. If you have a narrow strip between like a sidewalk and a street where you don't have a wide area, you have to use drip by code. So there's a real good reason to use it. And then if you just want to try to conserve water, um, I like to use drip because it's very versatile. So if I want to just change the shape of the bed, I can do it. The polyethylene pipe can just bend. You know, if this had all sprinkly irrigation and I wanted to change the shape of the bed, that would be a pretty big job to redo the PVC pipe and move things around. But with drip, with polyethylene, it's extremely flexible. It's extremely easy to move it around and, and make different shapes. So several things to consider for subsurface drip here in Oklahoma. Thank you very much for your insights, Dr. Nella. My pleasure. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.